Do you remember when you were a kid and you wanted something so much or you wanted your parents to do something so badly for you and it maybe didn't happen at that moment, but you wanted it and they said, I promise you I'll get this for you or I promise you I'll do this for you. And so they made a promise for you. Or if it was really important, sometimes you would make them pinky swear uh, that they would promise to do something for you or do something with you. If you remember any of those, I would love to hear what your promises were and that the promises your parents promise to keep uh, for you. Definitely put it in the comment section or you can just email me at tomp at newlife.church. By the way, I'm Tom Pounder. I'm the online guy here at New Life Christian Church. And today we're going to talk about promises. Go figure, you know, we're going to talk about promises. But in particular, we're going to talk about how God keeps his promise and how God keeps his promises in this Christmas season. Okay, I think it's really important as we're in this Christmas season, the God's ultimate promise was fulfilled. And so we're going to look at it and we're going to talk about it a little bit more. But one of my favorite verses uh, is Numbers twenty three nineteen, and it talks about promises. It says this, God is not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Does he promise and not fulfill? Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I love that verse because God fulfills his promises. God keeps his promises. And that's what I want you to remember today. God keeps his promises. And so we're going to look at two particular instances in the Bible in regards to Christmas uh, where God keeps his promises. The first one is in Isaiah chapter 7. In this situation, uh, King Ahaz I'm terrible with names in the Old Testament, by the way, but King Ahaz, he was the king of Judah at the time, and Judah was facing a foreign invasion. So he was actually going to help, uh, hope that uh, the people of Assyria would help them. But Isaiah stopped them in his tracks. And he said, you don't need that help. I'm going to, God is going to provide a divine intervention for you. And it's found in this Isaiah chapter seven, verse 14. It says this, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and you shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. Isaiah is saying that while you are looking for a human help, a human support, a human savior, God's going to give you something better. God is going to come down with us, and that is in Christ. That person is Jesus. We're going to read the scripture in a second of where it's fulfilled, but all throughout the Old Testament, there are different instances where God talks about how he will bring a Savior. He will provide for us, and there will be a Savior. For hundreds of years, the Jewish people were waiting for the Savior all the way back to Genesis chapter 3, where God promised that there would be a, a, a destruction to Satan from what God has provided. And it talks about with Jacob and Abraham and David, through that lineage, how there was going to be a Savior rise up from them. And again, I think the Jewish people thought this would be a human Savior, as King, as the King Ahaz just thought here, that it would be a human Savior. But no, he's talking about a divine Savior. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus Christ, God with us. So God is providing a Savior, and it comes down, and it's fulfilled here in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 17. If you've heard this passage, I would encourage you just to close your eyes and visualize this as it's happening. And actually, if you've never heard this passage, close your eyes as well and visualize this happening uh, as we pick it up in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people, for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find him wrapped, uh, you'll find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, this, I, I love just picturing this right now. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them, they'd gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem 
and see this thing that had happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph with the baby who was lying in a manger. This is the promise fulfilled. All throughout the Old Testament, there have been promises, there have been prophecies about this Savior. In fact, there are hundreds of prophecies. Just do a simple Google search of the different prophecies about Jesus and how Jesus then fulfilled them. God uh, is faithful and God keeps his promises. So my question for you is, are you experiencing the promises fulfilled that God has given us? Are you experiencing that life and life to the full that God promises us? And if you aren't, why not? Why do you think that is? What is it that that makes you think that you're not experiencing the life and life to the full? You know, I've known that when I'm not experiencing the full life that God has promised to me, it's because I'm not staying close to Jesus. You know, I'm not, I'm not spending time daily with Jesus. I'm not praying. I'm not reading the scriptures. I'm not spending time in fellowship in community with other believers. And that's when I feel farther away. So if you're not feeling close to Jesus today, my encouragement for you is to get close to him and align yourself to his purposes and his plan for your life and experience that so that you can experience his, experience the the uh, faithfulness of Jesus. Again, it goes back to Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son a man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? In the Bible, there are tons of promises. There are tons of promises God has for us. And we don't know them, maybe, because we're not spending time in this. We're not spending time with him. So I want to encourage you again, spend time with Jesus today. Spend time with Christ. Five minutes. You can do five minutes a day. But I, I guarantee you, the longer you spend time with Jesus, the more you're going to experience and the more you're going to get out of that time. And so you can fully embrace and understand how God is faithful and the promises he has for you when we follow after him. So that's my encouragement for you today. If you got questions or you got thoughts on this, you can definitely put it in the comment section below. I would love to talk to you a little bit more about it. Or again, you can email me at Tom P at newlife.church. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for keeping your promises. And thank you for Jesus being a promise fulfilled. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for guiding us. And I pray, Lord, that this week, especially as we get closer to Christmas, we spend more and more time with you so we can experience your goodness and faithfulness in everything that we do. We thank you, Lord, and we praise your name. We ask for your blessing and your protection. Amen. Thanks so much for being with me today. I pray that you have a blessed day.